Before we start the video, I want to let you guys know about Gnosis. It's an analytical tool which you load your demos into and it breaks them all down for you. The positions you're playing throughout an entire game or multiple games, the heat maps of the positions of the player you're interested in, where the opening kills are coming from, opening deaths are coming from, and all the utility thrown throughout all the demos you load into it. And then if you want to know even more information, you hit the play feature and it brings up this really useful little tab and you can see exactly what on the entire round. So check the link out in the description below and use code ElmerPuddy for 50% off your first three months. Just the other day, Ents put an end to Astralis' 31 win streak on Nuke. And they did this by shifting and molding their CT defense around how they know Astralis like to play. If you know anything about the streak, often Astralis start on this T side, but they managed to win out these games anyway because they have such strong T sides on this historically CT sided map. But the way they like to play is like to manipulate outside, and Ents have a great game plan coming into this one to lock it down. So we start off here at round six, where there's gonna be a lobby crunch in from Alu, and X7's gonna be with him right behind, with just some two simple flashbangs in here. And along with this, there's gonna be even more pressure towards this lobby area. You can see Sergey, while this hectic play has been going on towards ramp, he's pushed in here towards lobby. And then also Alexi B has been facing door, where earlier he found device on the trade after he took out his teammate in aerial. So you can see straight away, they're trying to punish this weaker lobby hold from Astralis because the way they do play is this very, uh, aggressive style towards outside where they're very good at taking information away from the CTs. And you see Dupree, his reaction in this scenario is actually to continue doing this and to push out here towards outside. While this is going on, we did see uh, more lobby crunch coming through. The player we saw in hut peeking out, getting a kill. And notice he falls away and there's even more pressure. X7 jumps through this smoke while this has all been going on and they have full control of lobby. Now back to Dupree, he's going to be the player who went for this control outside and he's going to be the one that brings this round back into Astralis' favour in the 2v2. So he's going to be up into his heaven, not something they're expecting. He's going to find Alexi B and then Alu being very, very loud here towards the ladder lets it turn back into this 2v2 scenario. However, I like the way the Ents play this. They do a good job of sticking together, trying to isolate these fights because they know it's very unlikely that both players wrapped all the way around here towards heaven and they're going to be looking for this duel on towards Dupree together, just really trying to pincer him in, and they are eventually going to find him. Glaive's now left here outside again. Notice they like to gravitate towards this outside area, and we're going to see all the different ways that Ents want to try and abuse this. They start the round off, bang, we're going to hit lobby, going to get in there real hard and try and force that one in, and then as we continue throughout the half, we can move on to a round like round eight. And round eight is the round we really start to see Ents' CT game plan here. Remember I told you Astralis love to manipulate this outside area. Well, the most obvious way is the lobby crunch we saw last time. So they start off hitting Astralis with that. But from this point onwards, they're going to go to a very heavy style towards this outside area. And they're going to do it in a lot of different ways. First one being the next gun round is on this slow round. Aero is going to find the timing, get himself a lot of information here towards outside. But they're also going to leave Alu here. They really want to fight this outside area. And this is going to be a common theme we see. However, Astralis throw their outside smoke wall. Don't go past it. So Aero has a lot of the information in this round, which allows after a little while, Alu to rotate off because Astralis are very good at using this smoke wall, denying the information and going back and attacking the top or down towards that ramp area. So you can see Alu starts to move himself over here and he hedges a little bit more towards ramp than the upper side, which unfortunately for Ents isn't quite the correct call because you can see as the players come out top, uh, they try and they pretty much get overwhelmed. Sergei gets taken out here, and Alexi B can only get the one kill. Good utility from Astralis stops anyone from really rotating in. You can see Alu can't rotate in, X7's got a smoke above his head, and Ariel actually gets taken out trying to flank in the T lobby area. So you can see the aggression outside from Ents doesn't work out in this scenario, but it really sets the tone on what's to come. Round nine was a round that Astralis started to pick up the pace, but didn't go their way. Alu getting a pick as well as Ariel outside. But round 10 is the round where Ents just put all their cards on the table and completely shut down Astralis. So Astralis, they go for this outside uh, maneuver with all these smokes and mollies. You can see on the map right now, they've got a smoke down here towards that uh, lockers area, smoke on towards the garage, smoke towards Ariel in uh, the area. Of, what's that called? It's called Annex. And they're really trying to shut up all this information from Ents. But Ents are not interested at all. 
They have come out here and they're going to just straight brawl this and grind Astralis to a halt. So you can see Ariel underarms the smoke so that he can play around here towards this outside area, trying to just delay. You can see Astralis wildly spamming through this smoke. But what I'm interested in is the rotations right now. So X7's normally your ramp player. Well, he's down here. He's going towards Secret, ready to pop his head up there, play that kind of setup. Ariel, we said he's the one that's come out from Annex, completely leaving that A site. Alu's in here towards this back garage area, just ready for contact to come in so he can swoop in and get a kill or two and play a bit of a more of a supportive role. And Alexi B, who picked up ramp for the X7, who was falling down here towards this under or this B site area coming up secret, he's left ramp completely and he's also ready to fight outside, which I said earlier, Astral love to fight outside. So they got Alexi B here, X7's moving down towards the secret area, Alu's in the garage position. And you've also got Ariel, who's left Annex. So interestingly, this leaves Sergey as the sole player between the top site and ramp. So no one ramp, one player on top. Small little note is he does throw a smoke as this outside brawl starts to happen. To smoke off this door area, try and deter the player and lobby in. Uh, zip from coming out there. And then he's able to just watch this hut entrance. So as this goes out, look what this does to Astralis. Okay, smoke's down. Flash comes over, but if we look at it from a Stratus member's point of view, Ents have done an incredible job. All the smokes have faded, Astralis now have no safe passage across to where they want to go, and this is Alu's perfect time to show himself. He's going to peek out here, and he's going to catch Magisk trying to cross out here towards outside. You can see at this point it's like, okay, they're playing super heavy outside for Astralis, so Zip tries to find a 1v1. He does go here towards ramp, and he's going to win that duel. Now, what Astralis have managed to do is get down this secret area uh, undetected. They're going to fight this off, and it's going to be Glaive leading the way. But remember X7. He's already down here ready for the potential cross from Astralis. Not only do they have three players brawling outside, the one unders. And he's going to make sure this round doesn't go anywhere. Just holding the angle, hitting these headshots, Molotov delaying any further take from the two players. Very low on HP. And you can see from there, if they can't come down this unders area... They have to fight Alu and try and cross Alu, who also has a wicked cross fire with Ariel. So you can see they're really boxed in here with time running low. The flash in towards Alu is going to be Ariel peeking out. And Alu does a great job of just staying alive and allowing his teammate to take the fight. Kill comes in there for Zip, but he gets traded out by Sergei. So you can see another approach from Ents, how they want to deal with this outside pressure that Astralis loves to apply. And again, it's a completely too new look to what we've seen earlier on in the half. And Ents weren't just doing crazy over rotations over and over again, leaving parts of the map open like what we've talked about previously. They had standard rounds in between, such as this one here. You can see Ariel's patrolling outside. You've got Alu watching ramp. X7's gone unders because Zip dropped down the vent early in the round. And then you have the two A players just quite happily locking this down. So a very standard kind of a round from Ents. Two top, one watching outside, one ramp and one unders with that pressure from Astralis. But Astralis, they weren't without fault in this one. You can see they're missing uh, the first smoke in this one, just throwing the last two, maybe hoping that no one will be looking at it. But Ariel completely punishes this. Also note, that Ents, they weren't completely normal in this one and how they played passive. They're still getting aggressive in here. You can see Sergey and Alexi B actually pushed lobby on timing together. But again, they're not over rotating. Alu also peeked in with his AWP to lock down this trophy room area. So changing the time on the aggression, not so much the over rotation on this one, but again, the aggressive play continues at a different timing, making it hard for Astralis to read. And it's actually going to net Alexi B this kill. And you can see in a 5v2 scenario, yeah, this round's pretty much over. Now, just before round 12, a timeout was called by Astralis. And I think this is where Zonic or someone worked out exactly what was going on. Ents really heavily pressed in this outside area. Because you can see smoke walls broken in this scenario, which allows Ali to see the cross. But the way Astralis setting up this round, they flash, so Alu's forced off the angle, meaning someone could have potentially crossed towards that secret area, which forces Alexi B to drop to cover unders. However, this isn't the normal rotation you'd see. If a team could have outside, normally in this particular setup here, you'd probably send X7 down because of the position Alu's in, 
Ali would then cover ramp for X7, and Aerie would be the player patrolling outside, making sure they can't get under heaven or that hell area, or wrap around into Annex for some kind of A split, leaving still your two players top to lock it down. But hence, their rotations are heavily biased towards allowing pressure to continue outside, because you can see Lexi B is the player to drop, allowing both Alu and Arrow Ariel to have this extra pressure outside ready to fight there. And Astralis, they read this like a book. They wait for that rotation to happen. They know Sergei's going to be left here because it is that A player that ended up dropping in this scenario. And it's just going to be a brawl straight here out the A site. Sergei has really not very much he can do. Ariel does push through the smoke realizing what's going on, but him and Lexi B coming up the vent are not in a favorable position at all. Oh, so Astralis win their third round. I think a great call based off how you see Ensa rotating, a little bit different to normal, and I think this was definitely realized by Astralis. So the bomb goes down, 3v2, good Molotov, but they do end up holding this one off. Alu's still going to go for it. They have loads of money at this point, but Magisk is going to find the kill. And judging by that spray, he's not particularly happy at the moment. The next round, round 13, is nothing crazy, but Astralis, they're not really looking to fight outside. They throw their normal outside wall, just trying to get down secret. Unfortunately, though, Alu is there in the perfect position. And once he gets this kill, you know the AWP is here, it's very difficult to fight an AWPer on these unders lines. So you can see Ariel, good one through the smoke. This man was incredibly point getting a kill outside. So you can see how they actually pivot Astralis and start to go inside the smoke, despite that not being their plan, because they know fighting an AWP on those lines unders is very difficult. So Alu in the right place at the right time, netting them this round as well, bringing it to 3-10. Round 14 is the round that really convinced me Astralis knew what was going on. They're going to throw that same outside walls we saw earlier on where they had all those players brawling outside from Ents. And once Magis throws this smoke, you're going to see the rotations it causes. And this is Astralis hard countering how Ents came into this one. So this smoke wall comes down, the flashes start to come outside from Astralis. But look at the rotations from Ents. Alu, he's the outside player. He was there from the start. Fair enough. X7, he's moved himself from the ramp, you can see his nade trajectory, actually towards his elbow, again, ready to fight outside. Aerial in his annex position here, ready to fight outside as well. I'll bring up the map, probably easy to see, maybe not when he's fully flashed, but he's ready here to fight outside. And then Alexi B, he's happy to crowd in here towards this annex area. I know the smoke on the screen looks really nice, guys, but you can just see two guys in annex, X7 moving towards that elbow position to try and fight outside, and Alu already here. So Ents continuing their same games, but Astralis reading it like a book, going to flash in towards ramp, and you can see because X7's on that corner, he's forced away, and all this map control is Astralis's. They can continue down towards that unders bomb site, and things become very difficult for, well, Ents in general. Kill goes towards device. Glaive as well, these players a little bit too slow to rotate from Ents, despite that being the two Annex players, they would have done a vent drop early on. 5v3 for Astralis, and once again, very late into the half, they've punished this outside aggression from Ents, netting them their fourth round. Round 15, last round of the half. Astralis will get to five rounds. They go back to this vent drop from Zip, but he is trying to counter this outside aggression from Ents. They're actually going back with a strat to try and fight this Astralis. You can see Zip is going to come up behind in this secret position and actually find Ariel. Now, at this point here, you can see Ents have once again rotated around. Alu's in here. He was looking for this door pick, which he's been very successful with throughout the half. Uh, X7 has rotated here through unders, unders. He's looking for Zip in this scenario here. Sergey is top and Alexi B is also top. So once again, you can see Ents more than happy to leave Ramp. X7, he was the ramp player. Look at the map right now. No one's replaced him. So again, Ents trying to gamble a little bit towards this outside position. Alu was sitting in here towards uh, Annex. He's going to win the fight towards Zip as he continues to peek up. But they have punished this outside aggression from Ents. Now, unfortunately for Astralis, good utility blocking off the door and such for them. They don't know that ramp's been left completely open. But Alexi B is going to get back up the vent and... Well, Astralis, they had this one potentially, but they do not trade the short range, the SMG here, and Magisk as well has a very difficult job coming out hut, and Device left with it all to do. So Astralis did a good job of manipulating the rotations. Again, Ents ready and happy to gamble ramp, which goes their way in this one, because Astralis come out top. If they hit ramp, 
things could have been a little bit more interesting. X7 was already under, so that would have helped a little bit. So again, things don't go Astralis' way. They really had to trade that SMG coming at heart to make things interesting. So good individual performance from Alexi B there towards that squeaky door. And just like that, you can see Device trying to bait a little bit. He's just going to get taken out. And that's 11 CT rounds for Ents. Now the pistol round doesn't go Ents' way, but the first gun round, they play it well, pretty standard in most people's eyes. They throw the outside wall uh, to allow them to cross down towards secret. And you can see Ali's going to be the only player actually crossing here. So as soon as this is possible, Astralis do the normal rotations. There's no crazy pushes or anything from there. They're playing a very standard game in this first gun round. Device leaves that annex position. He's the player dropping down here to watch unders. You've got Glaives to watching any wrap towards heaven or that annex area. They've left both their players up here towards top, Magisk and Debris. And then Zip is obviously the ramp. Player. Now, very standard from Ents, you force that rotation away, so there's probably only two players towards this upper bomb site, and then you try and smack that upper bomb site. Magisk makes a bit of a mistake. He spams for a little bit because he knows, okay, from throwing that smoke wall, you can't get back towards lobby, but he goes back for more. And as he goes back for more, this is the timing where you can come back towards top and start this top exec. So you can see the player's gonna be ready to come at hut and squeaky door. Magisk, yeah, he sticks around just a little bit too long towards outside, and he's dropping into flames and gets taken out by X. Seven, leaving a 5v2 for Ents. So nothing crazy, it's a normal kind of round, just moving the rotations, making sure there's not too many people up here towards top, and just hitting that upper bomb site. Magis caught a little bit off guard, and that's the first gun round going the way of Ents. And then to follow it up, and the other round I'm interested in is a complete change of pace from Ents. This is something that's not common between top level players, but you can see Sergei's gonna find the opening kill out here. Followed by X7, final kill play towards heaven, and Glaive actually ends up spamming him through the smoke, leaving him in a 2v3. So they generate the pace, get those openers for Astralis in, but Astralis managed to get back, spamming the smoke, who would have thought? And it's actually going to be a nice read from Alu to vent drop here and get the bomb down towards the lower side. And a little bit of a gamble pays off for Ents in this one. You can see Sergei knows there's probably someone lobby, not uncommon for Zip to push in this particular scenario. So he's looking for that player. There's no one really going to be there. Uh, well, Zip is there, he just perfectly avoids him. And Alu's gonna move in here and they're gonna lock down this mega what ramp position. There's gonna be the fight one on towards Glaive by Alu. And then it's gonna end up being a nice cleanup from Sergei. So, and at this point here, when they win this round and Sergei gets these two kills, the money is in the bin for Astralis and Ents are able to continue this one and win out the rest of the game from a 13-7 lead. 14-7 after the anti-eco. So I'm going to leave you with some images of the final couple of rounds. Make sure to like and subscribe if you did enjoy this content and I'll catch you all in the next one.